Market Outlook is an important page for you to read every time when you start preparing new round of decisions because this gives you information about what is happening in the operating environment. Then we start the actual decision making under the sales section and in this particular case we are um, operating a pharmaceutical company which uh, operates in USA, China and France. You may see different market areas here depending on what your instructor has chosen but in our case now the default home market is USA then we operate in China and France in addition. And uh, we have two products we have this uh, Rubana which is like a painkiller product and then we have Andiox which is a vitamin product. Both of these are so-called over-the-counter uh, medicines. And uh, now keep in mind that you compete against other teams in the market so whatever your team is deciding has an impact to the other uh, team and, and vice versa. And uh, now on this first page here we decide the delivery priorities so we, in which order we satisfy the different market areas and in this case we have set the USA as number one, China number two and France number three. So if it happens that we run out of products globally then France will be cut out of supplies first and by clicking the drop down you find all the different options here. On this page we can also make demand estimations. If we change the demands here in these cells then uh, we can see how that will actually influence our deliveries and uh, logistics. Logistics report is down here where we can see the opening inventory, we can see how much we are manufacturing and how much we are delivering to the different market areas and this we can find for both products separately from both uh, production areas. So we have the production in USA and in China. In Europe or in France we will not have any production facilities available at any point during the game. Uh, now let's move on to the market areas. USA is the first one and here again we find the demand estimation where we can then estimate how much we sell. On the right hand side we can see what actually happened last year and we can see that we sold in USA this painkiller product almost 22,000 units and now we are expecting a slight increase in demand. And then in the white cells we make uh, estimations which are then going to be compared against other teams. The estimations do not influence our results directly but those will influence all the different budgets and projections that we are doing during the decision making process so it is very very useful to have accurate demand estimations. So besides price we also decide about the investments in sales promotion where we have advertising and customer care. These have different influences for the different products in the different markets. Once we have made the uh, sales estimations, price decisions and other uh, decisions for the products we can see what kind of profitability we can expect from the product and here we are now looking at bit more than 3 million uh, USD from this product in this market. Then if we need to cut the price, let's say that the competition is intensifying and we are forced to cut the price to 240, we can see how is that going to influence. It's going to take about 400,000 away from our product profitability. Now keep in mind that the simulation um, does not pose any judgment on your decision. So if I would say that uh, instead of cutting the price, I would increase the price by two times, like 480, then uh, it's going to show a very, very nice uh, profitability for me. But you can imagine what happens if I set this kind of price and my competitors are selling at less than 300. So I'm not going to be selling this kind of amount that I'm anticipating here. So keep in mind the competitive dynamics always when you make the decisions. This picture here in the middle then shows you the importance of the different uh, factors that influence the demand. So here we can see that price as a single factor is by far the biggest influencer to your demand. The other uh, factors are then given here. Later during the round you will see movement uh, on both sides of the horizontal axis and then it means that it or it shows how you are positioned against the competitor. So if your this price triangle goes above the horizontal line it means that in terms of price you are more competitive than the market on average. Then for example if your quality goes below the uh, horizontal line then it means that 
in terms of quality you are falling behind the competitors. So keep an eye on these maps. Um, the structure of the uh, marketing pages is similar across all the different products and different markets, except that in USA um, we do the pricing in USD, in China we do that in um, Chinese renminbi, and in France we do the pricing in euros. And even though the page looks similar, keep in mind that the, the size of the market, the possible growth rates of the market, and then the uh, customer preferences uh, are different between the different markets. Additional deliveries is the last uh, tab here under the sales section and here we are then receiving requests for proposal from different parties who need bigger amounts of products uh, for their needs and then um, we, we can participate to this if we like. We don't have to do it but if we want to participate then we give the price here and then we also decide how much we invest into the sales process. And, um, if we get the deal, which is only going to be given to one team uh, per, per request, uh, then uh, we will be delivering in the, in the following round. So if in round one we get the deal, then the delivery will take place in round two. So we will have time to prepare for the delivery during the uh, coming next round. Here on the right hand side, we find this link called projections. And here on the projections, we are able to see the full income statement for the previous round. Here we can see that all the way down to the bottom line. And then we can see the pro forma statements or the predictions for this round. So whenever we make any changes here in the estimations and decisions, we see how that uh, reflects on our uh, P&L all the way to the bottom line. Besides income statement, we also find the balance sheet, we find financial ratios and different uh, parameters like uh, interest rates and uh, uh, foreign exchange rates and the, and the costs. Production page is the next one and here um, as mentioned, we have production in USA and China. And for both areas, we decide the building capacity and we decide the machinery capacity. And um, now in this case, we can see that our production capacity is 176.3, which is the lower of the two buildings and machinery. Our machinery capacity is now limiting our overall production capacity. If we want to increase our production capacity, then we can invest in machinery, let's in at 300, uh, sorry, 30,000 uh, units for machinery capacity, which then increases our overall production capacity up to 206. Machinery capacity becomes available immediately and uh, building capacity takes one year uh, for construction. So if we make the decision in round one, the new buildings are going to be available in round two. Uh, we also make a decision about cost efficient improvements here, so we are able to um, improve the cost efficiency in our production processes by investing into this fund. And then on the right hand side, we can see the estimated impact from our cost efficiency investments. And if we make investments here, then we can also adjust the expected production efficiency. This is again a blue cell. so. It's not a decision, but it is our estimation and it's useful to look at the previous round uh, efficiency and then use this chart in order to uh, estimate this round efficiency as accurately as, as possible. Now that we know that we have this total production capacity 206.3, then we need to allocate that between the two different products in this uh, USA production side. So for the painkiller, we then allocate this, let's say 110 or we put 106 to make the calculation easier, 106 here and then 100 for the vitamin. And then we can see that for the painkiller, our current global uh, uh, balance is such that we have a little bit of inventory, expecting to have a little bit of inventory left. And then for the uh, vitamin or antioxidants, we have a small amount of uh, lost sales, which means that our global uh, production is not able to satisfy our global demand. Uh, same structure for the production page can be found here, but the starting uh, capacities are different 
but the decision making is done exactly with the same principles as uh, we know this before. Quality control is the page where we can influence the product quality and we invest separately to the different products. By investing to the quality, we are able to improve the quality of the product, which in turn will uh, improve the demand for the product. So the factors that influence our demand are uh, price, then the sales promotion decisions, advertising and customer care, and then the product quality. And those factors will be compared against the other teams. Now, finance is the last page under decisions that we are going to be doing. And here we can see the cash flow statement, where the money is coming from and where it is going. And then on the right hand side, we have the actual finance decisions. Now, depending on what your instructor has decided, decided you may or you may not see this working capital section or this equity section. The, in the default case, only the loan decision is visible. So if you only see this loan decision, then it basically means that you can either take more loans or you can repay existing loans. But if the working capital is enabled, then you're also able to influence the uh, payment terms. And uh, the longer is the day sales outstanding, then uh, the uh, happier are the customers. But of course, that's going to create a restraint on your on your own finances. And then the higher is the payables outstanding, then the more impatient are going to are going to suppliers going to be, and uh, they will eventually start also growing the cost of the of the raw materials. So be careful when you adjust these uh, working capital items. Um, equity decisions include issuing and uh, repurchasing shares. So positive number here uh, will issue shares, negative number will repurchase shares, and then dividend per share is decided here. And then if I want to. All right, so now the deadline is approaching. We have done the decisions. And then at the time of the deadline, the system will calculate the results, which become available here under the results section. And we have the summary page, which includes different results. And uh, all the results can be always seen side by side. In our case, we have now three teams in the market, so we can see their uh, results. And then uh, in most of the pages, we have separate section for the charts. And then we have another page for the for the details that we can analyze. Uh, um, we find the market information, production information, logistics, and then all the financial statements. And uh, then we can always also go back to the previous rounds if we like. And then we can, if we are playing in a, in a large course with multiple universes, we can also go see the other universe results. Results can also be downloaded as an Excel file. Uh, they can be printed if we have to. And then there are also some slides that we can open in order to create this um, uh, graphical uh, presentation of the results. And throughout these different sections, we can always uh, export the chart. So in all the different charts, including the slides, you find these little boxes in the corner that you can then use to export that slide if you need it for your presentation or other kind of uh, summary. Okay, now this concludes our uh, overview.